Hey guys, welcome back to another Realm of the Mad God chest opening video. This is going to be episode 11, I think. Um, so, funny story for this one. In between the previous episode and now, I have not gotten a single fungal cavern quest. Whatsoever. They were all either Void, Marble Colossus, uh, Cult, or Havoc in the Halls, which is Marble and Cult, which is uh, I think a Void chest, and then Shadows, and then Nest. I have not gotten a single crystal cavern chest whatsoever, which is both good and bad because good in that uh, fungal cavern is usually the hardest one to get. Not the hardest one. It is the most tedious to get because each fungal cavern takes at minimum 20 minutes to do. And so therefore, like, you know, the less I can do the better. Bad though because a fungal cavern has really awesome white bags since the most, I guess, selection of white bags out of all of the dungeons and so. Eh, you know, I mean, half and half, kind of deals a mixed bag. Also, I've been pretty unlucky with my chest collection for the silver chest because I haven't been able to get too many. If you look up here, I was able to restock up on quite a few chests, like I got my Dedox back, I got my Laud back, but I kept getting things like Janus or Parasite Chambers, which I blew through all of, and so yeah, I kind of like had a bad time trying to get all the silver chest because I just kept getting Janus over and over again or the uh, double trouble and as you know no one does Janus right now because everyone does Oryx even though Janus takes like 20 seconds I, I don't know <laughs> all right anyways let's get into it this time though I promise to choose a more lighthearted topic because I understand that the past couple episodes have been a little too deep and I think well that's not a bad thing let's uh kind of alternate let's keep it spiced up by adding some more lighthearted discussion but first things first let's start and uh, let's get moving one, two, three, four. Okay, pet stasis might- Why does my knight not pet stasis sometimes? As usual, I don't know what topic to talk about today, but I actually know there is one thing I want to talk about. So, with Oryx 3, finally after about- after they've been teasing it ever since like April, it's uh, it's here. It's about to show up. But Oryx 3 I think is going to be here in on July 22nd or something like that, and in return, they're- postponing Month of the Mad God, which is fine. I think that's a, a good trade-off because Oryx 3 is going to keep us quite busy for a long time. And if you've been looking at the item- Oh, Coral Silk. <laughs> if you've been looking at the items that they've had posted for Oryx 3, uh, some of them are, in my opinion, more balanced versions of the new ST- of the old ST items like that. There's one that is similar to the Hideo Jotene, or not the Hideo Jotene, the Mercy's Bane, but you don't lose as much defense. You don't get as much attack or dexterity, but you don't lose as much defense. And I think I would much rather use that over Mercy's Bane because I'm more of a person that enjoys balance. I think that's fine. There have been some people who have been complaining about how the items are power creeping. Ooh, first white bag. There we go. Giant catcher. Nice, nice. Try to get the blue bag first. White bags fortunately last a long time, so even after you take a while to get them, it's not going to be too difficult for you to- for me, like even if I store all my stuff. Some people were complaining about how the new Oryx 3 drops were a little too overpowered and that they're power creeping the game. There is a topic I want to talk about in regards to that sort of aspect of prot. Okay. I like a prot. I'm actually running low on prots, so the more the better. Alright, sorry about that phone call. What was I talking about right? One facet of game design that I think is Something that is sort of a, an inevitability is that most of the time, especially for single player games, the only way to incorporate more challenge into the game to encourage players to continue progressing further and further, uh, or to give them an incentive to want to try new content, is to introduce either more difficult content or stronger content, right? Because if you think about MMOs, normally, like Realm of the Mad God or other MMOs like Maple Story or Final Fantasy XIV, stuff like that. You would have no desire to want to complete new content UNLESS YOU GET THE HEATED JOTENE! <laughs> what the- <laughs> I gotta screenshot this. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm so sorry for the ear rape. Oh my word. I didn't even know you could get Tenny from. What? I can't even talk today. <laughs> oh my goodness. 
I really hope in post-production I can lower the volume because I basically screamed at max volume. <laughs> okay, okay. Right, now, if I can complete a sentence without being interrupted by my own enthusiasm. For single player games that have, uh, you know, that encourage player that continue to release new content, you normally would want to make content better or stronger or harder than the stuff that came before, right? Because there's no reason for you to add content that would provide you with a- if there's no other side benefit- okay. I'm not gonna- I'm gonna- What? I'm just gonna hope for my sake that these are first mate's hooks or something bad and not something ridiculously- Okay. <laughs> it's a hook right there. Which one's this one? <laughs> a double hook, okay. So, I guess we're not getting white bags anymore, we're getting orange bags. I mean, that's fine. So, usually for games, especially if the focus of the game is to progress, you know, to get better stats, to get better equipment and stuff like that, you would need to pick up uh, content or you would need to produce content that encourages players to want to undertake it because usually it's more difficult or it has more yielding rewards, right? And therein lies a sort of catch-22 problem with game design in that in order for you to create new content, you have to sort of adhere to power creep. You have to give in to power creep. But if you don't want to give in to power creep, you basically can't create new content. And I feel bad because I think there's a lot of developers that have to deal with players who really don't understand this sort of sentiment. Or not sentiment, who don't understand this sort of dynamic in that, like, if let's say DECA were to release new dungeons, right? or new items, especially dungeons that are harder. I understand that they do upload dungeons or they uh, develop dungeons such as uh, Magic Woods that are obviously not really necessary for players because there are other sources of attack and other sources- not attack, other sources of dexterity, other sources of speed, and so therefore you really don't have a reason to want to go for it unless you want the life-bringing Lotus ST. And so most of the time, like, people don't really care about content that is weaker because they just want the new challenge, right? And then. That's when Lost Tulsa was created, that's when Shatters was created, prior to when there was no Shatters. And uh, that's when Fungal Cavern was created. And now we are having Oryx 2, which is sort of that new next step, right, towards the better equipment. Because every time there's a new endgame dungeon, Dekka of course has to increase the power ceiling. Otherwise, you really don't want to do it unless you're just the type of person who enjoys collecting white bags. And I am one of those people. I know that there are some items in the Fungal Cavern that aren't exactly better than Lost Hall's items, and there are also some old content that are still very powerful to this day, like the Forgotten Crown from the Shatters. The Shatters has been around for a long time. But generally speaking, if you were to connect progression or the release of new content to the Power Creep ceiling, they're, you know, pretty congruous in that there's only so much content you can produce that doesn't increase the scale of power. And what I don't understand is why players feel like that's a bad thing. Even for games where power creep is not as conspicuous as like in Pokemon, right? No one really thinks about Pokemon as power creep because you don't see it all too much since every game is sort of their own standalone project. But the thing is, even now, what with the release of Z moves or with the release of Mega Evolution or even like way back when, Legendary Pokemon only had a base stat total of, say, 580 to maybe 600. The only exception being Mewtwo, which was 680. But even when Lugia and Ho-Oh came out, it was pretty commonplace for legendaries to not really be that strong because of the legendary birds and then the legendary beast trio. However, in Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, there have been more legendaries coming out with much, much higher base stat totals of 680, like Kyogre and Groudon. People didn't care about it too much back then because Pokemon was still young, it's still, it was still in its infancy stages. We're of course now more advanced, more developed, and uh, we've seen our fair share of good and bad games, and new types of projects have come out, new ideas, new trends. There's been a growing concern about players who think that uh, you destroy a game by sort of making old content kind of useless, and while it's a sort of nihilistic way to approach it, that's just how life is, because you know, out with the old and in with the new. There have been a lot of content, a lot of dungeons and stuff like that in Realm that you really never see anyone going into anymore because you don't need to, you just only have to go into the harder dungeons. That's three hooks. Oh goodness. 
I don't think it's all that bad though. It is kind of unfortunate because in other games where the progression is a lot more egregious such as in Yu-Gi-Oh where it seems like every week there's this new overpowered deck right or there's new overpowered cards that come out that just truly destroy everything else and it's hyper efficient and all that stuff. Um, so I guess that to some extent the developers have a little bit of agency as to how much they want the power creep to push you know a game forward. But at the same time there's not much you can do since that's unfortunately the nature of a lot of games because it's not exactly a bad thing, but the longer you continue with a game's lifespan, you eventually just have to concede to the fact that in order for you to entertain players and to keep making them want to play more and more of the game, you have to release content that inadvertently makes the scale of power much much higher. The only exception to this I would say is competitive games because you don't have to release new content per se. In terms of harder content, you only just have to release new content and then leave the rest of the efforts up to the players to continue improving against each other and stuff like that. But for single player games or for PvE games like Realm, it's unavoidable. I'm trying to think of ways that we can at least not really prevent it but reduce the rate at which it happens since uh, it's been a while since we had the next big power jump which was uh, Lost Souls 2.0. Uh, but when Oryx 2 comes out and then if DECA ever releases new endgame dungeons, it will be more noticeable, especially with, uh, if you guys remember during the producer's letter, they talked about the new exaltation system, which is the first time in a very long time that we will be able to exceed the base stats on our characters, which means you'll see characters which with much higher base stats and um, they'll, there'll be more things that you can do. What with, um, I think there's a few other things like, uh, you know, adding increased drop rates to white bags or other things like that. That gives me the idea that DECA isn't against, nor are they afraid of adding things that will just make characters stronger in general. People have been sort of complaining about how the game has become too steamrolly. And I don't really think that's DECA's fault, I think that's sort of a community's fault, be what with all these Discord servers making the organized runs, and therefore there being no reason for you to do public runs, where you just pop a, you know, pop a Lost Halls key in the Nexus or something like that, no one's gonna want to do them because it's just so much more efficient to do uh, the Discord runs. Yes, that is sort of not the same way we played the game back when the game used to be harder, without pets and without all these overpowered UTs or STs, but you also have to remember that chances are, if they didn't release all this stuff, we wouldn't be playing the game anymore, really. Why would you ever want to do anything else after you get your Shatter's Whites or, I don't know, Demon Blade and stuff like that? Let's say back when the strongest item was still Demon Blade or still Coral Bow and Doombo. If the Bow meta was still Coral Bow and Doombo, to this day, Realm would get increasingly boring very fast. They have no choice but to produce new content that is stronger or more challenging, otherwise players even the most casual player will eventually just realize that there's nothing else to do, there's nothing else to really strive for. For players like me who, uh, I haven't exactly beaten the game, there's still a lot of white bags I don't have. But even for someone like me who has, uh, how do I say? Players like me, we sort of have everything we need to see from the game, we've done everything there is to do in the game. And uh, quite frankly, the only reason why I'm still playing the game is because I have nothing better to play. And I mentioned before, I enjoy games that are all about lifestyle. Sometimes you're not always going to make significant improvements. There'll be days, there'll be weeks where you don't get any improvement done at all. You'll stay the same as where you were before. But of course, we are sort of the most dedicated portion of the player base to DECA. And so therefore they have to cater towards us first, in a sense. Lower level players though, some who may never even reach this level of status in the game are also still affected by whether or not new content is produced because over time things like the you know Tomb of the Ancients, Tomb of the Ancients was the hardest dungeon in the game back then and it used to be that end goal that you had to strive to reach but now even to casual players Tomb of the Ancients is sort of like a, a bland kind of dungeon right you only really do it if you ever need a pyramid ring or if you want to max out life power scaling as a whole relatively shifts the perception of difficulty and reward over time. Meaning eventually we'll get to a point where Lost Halls is considered a quote unquote easy dungeon and the new hardest dungeon will be some ridiculously crazy dragon that we have to kill uh, from the sky or there'll be a dungeon in hell or something like that, right? And like I said, 
this is not something that is only in Realm. This is in every single player versus environment game that has a focus on VS, as in like, you know, you have to fight something. That's some form of opposition, some adversity. Games like Minecraft, of course, there isn't really anything such as power creep. Well, there's the new netherite armor, I guess, but because Minecraft isn't exactly about power and stats and equipment, uh, power creep is not really native to Minecraft. It doesn't really apply to Minecraft, but most of the games like MMOs and RPGs, they will have this. And so, those of you who are saying that like the game has changed, it's no longer the same realm of the Mad God, uh, that's kind of the point, right? That's exactly what the point of all these new content changes. That's what they accomplish. We've always been adverse to change. Everyone's always been afraid of it. The whole, you know, change is inevitable, change is good. Yes, there's bad change, there's good change. You can definitely place a label on what is considered good change and bad change. But overall, change just happens, right? It's not exactly something that we can really decide on if it was better or worse if it didn't happen. But it has to happen because if it doesn't, then players will not be satisfied and, you know, they have to go. Hardly any game can retain its longevity if you don't just continue making updates, continue adding patches. Some of those patches could be done better, some of those patches uh, could be done worse, of course. But just because a game is not the same as it used to be doesn't exactly mean it's bad. I really love and hate nostalgia at the same time, since... It causes me a great deal of comfort, but it also inflicts a lot of pain. You have no idea how many times I wish life could just go back to the good old days, you know, like everyone says. I have to give away all this stuff. The thing is, if a game were to revert back to its original state, like a WoW Classic, sure, it might sound like a great idea, but the way people looked at a game back then is not the same as it is now, right? Like, um, everyone who's been clamoring for a bring back old Maple Story or bring back old Pokemon like Gen 1. Uh, yeah, I don't think that's really going to be as fun as things are right now, because we have a different mindset. We know more about video games as a whole, we've seen a bunch of different things, we have a more, I guess, strict definition of, of good game design, right? We have higher standards, and so therefore it's not as simple or straightforward to just say, oh, let's go back to the old days of something like, you know, video games like Minecraft or MapleStory, because if you think about it, there were a ton of problems with uh, old Maple Story and old Minecraft. Even Realm. There was a lot wrong with Realm back then. Like, there were so many problems with the game that were just terrible back then compared to now. There's a lot of good things about the game as it is now that it's just, you know, it's sort of like you're comparing Apple and Orange. You really can't. Initially, when people complain about games changing for the better or worse, they don't really know exactly what it would have been like if this version of the game existed back then, or that version of the game existed right now. And so, put that into perspective a little bit because some players I think just have too focused of an opinion on the fact that, oh, Decca ruined the game or Kabam ruined the game because they added this or because they added that or because things are getting stronger, things are getting weaker, stuff like that. Obviously, the game would not be any more popular than it is now or back then if we made things weaker, because if you kept producing weaker content, people would be like, why the hell would I do this? I'm perfectly fine with tier 12 equipment. However, they have no choice but to release tier 13 equipment, tier 14, tier 15, tier 16. We may even get to tier 20 because you need a reason for players to want to continue to progress, right? Otherwise, top players will leave. And if veteran players leave, then newer players will leave as well because they'll see that no one is here. So you sort of have to feed the top in order to feed the rest. And the only way to do that is to make better or stronger content, or more difficult content, so... It's the sad inevitability, but that's sort of how it is. In order for a tree to grow, it has to get bigger and bigger and bigger, and sometimes sacrifices have to be made for that. Anyways, okay, so this uh, video was kind of underwhelming in the sense that I didn't get too many good drops, like no white bags except for the prot. However, this more than makes up for it. <laughs> oh my goodness, I still can't believe I got the, another tenant. I know we just had the Thicket event, and I've seen some people who got like 6 tennis in 100 runs, and I've seen some people who've done 300 runs and have not gotten a single one. So you know what? This is awesome, considering that any ST can drop from the silver chest. So yeah. All right. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Sorry, this was a much more messy conversation, not to mention with all the interruptions I had at the very beginning. But I hope you guys took something out of this, and I hope it was a bit more lighthearted than the ones before. 
If you enjoyed, a rating would be much appreciated. But uh, other than that, be sure to subscribe for more content. Leave a comment down below. But for now, that's it. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon in the next video. Take care.